Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, we're going to be looking at issuing common and preferred stock. This topic is typically covered in a financial accounting course, and this is basically an introductory topic in a CPA, the FAR section. Now, the first thing we want to talk about is the term issuing. When we say issue, it means the company selling stocks. So what are we talking about here? We're talking about a company and this company is selling stocks to individuals or it could be to other companies as well but to another entity to another entity okay so the company issued the stocks what do the individuals give back in return they invest money the individuals invest money in the company and this is what we mean by issuing so every time i use the word issuing in this in this context it means the company selling stocks to shareholders think of them as individual but in the real world they don't have to be individuals as always i would like to remind you my viewers to connect with me on a professional level on linkedin if you're a facebook user please like my facebook page youtube is where you where you would want to subscribe to my channel like my videos put them in playlists let the world know about them i also have a instagram account please follow my instagram account and on my website you can get in touch with me so in this session i'm going to talk about explain how to account for the issuance of common and preferred stock so let's take a look at the big picture first the two primary sources of equity for any company so equity comes from two sources one is paid in capital and two is retained earning now in this session we're going to focus on paid in capital and what is the overall idea of paid in capital paid in capital is what the investors or the shareholders invest in the company and what do they invest in the company generally speaking they invest cash okay so what they do they buy common stock and they buy preferred stock we talked about preferred stock earlier the features of preferred stock today we're going to see how we issue preferred stock and we're going to be introducing a new account called paying capital and access of power but all these accounts a b and c they are considered paid in capital they represent what the investors what the shareholders invested in the company and the best way to illustrate this is to work a few examples to show you how to issue common stock assume that hydro slide issues sold 1000 shares of one dollar par value again we talked about the par value before the par value is a is a, is an is an arbitrary amount it's a number assigned to the stock happens to be a dollar prepare hydro slides journal entry a if 1000 shares are issued for one dollar per share so they sold 1000 shares and they sold each share for a dollar well how much cash did the company receive well if they sold each cash each share for a dollar they received 1000 so the company will debit cash because they received cash and they will credit common stock now the question is how much do we credit common stock write it down here's the formula for common stock it's the number of shares times the par value that's always the case how much do you credit common stock number of shares times the par value number of shares is a thousand the par value is a dollar therefore we credit common stock a dollar b 1000 shares are issued for five dollars now we sold 1000 shares and we sold them for five dollar a piece now we're going to be receiving cash five thousand dollar okay how much do we credit common stock well we're going to credit common stock the number of shares times the par value which is a thousand dollar well the entry does not balance so here's what's going to happen anything extra when we issue stocks anything in addition to the par value so let, 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 let me show it to you from a one dollar perspective from one stock perspective each stock is sold at five dollars minus one dollar par value left us with four dollars any this is called access of par this is an access of par it means the stock were sold four dollars above par well the, what do we call this extra four dollars we're going to call it paid in capital an excess of par value and that's four thousand dollar so this is an equity account paid in capital uh, paid in capital and excess of par value is an equity account here's what i want you to look at it i want you to look at these accounts are technically the same common stock 
and paid in capital are technically the same. In what sense they're technically the same? They both represent what the investors invested in the company. They both represent paid in capital. And this is a picture of it. So this is the hydro slide balance sheet. This is the stockholders equity. This is paid in capital section. So notice we have 2000 for common stock and we have 4000 for paid in capital and an excess of common stock. So total paid in capital is 6000. So notice these two account these two accounts are the same. They're, they represent paid in capital. Now, the other, the other component of stockholders' equity is retained earning. And what is retained earning? Retained earning is the excess amount that's, that's kept after um, the company. Uh, it's the excess amount of profit that's kept. So basically, retained earning is revenues minus expenses equal to net income. Okay, so net income, it's going to go to retained earning unless it's paid out in dividend. So any any profit that we keep that we don't pay out in dividend is called retained earning. Okay, now paid in capital and excess of part is also called the premium on stock. In the real world, they use the word capital surplus. That's another word for capital surplus. That's another word for paid in capital, just in case you saw it in another setting. Assume instead of $1 par value, Hydro Slide has a $5 stated value, no par, and the company issue 5,000 shares at $8. So here what they did is they changed the example. What they told you, they told you instead of $1 par value, so they don't have $1 par value, the company issue what we called $5 stated value. There is no par value, $5 stated value. Now here's what I want you to know. Every time you hear the word stated value, you can substitute the stated with par. It's the same thing as the par value as far as we're concerned. So they sold 5,000 shares at $8. So 5,000 shares at $8 a piece, the company would receive $40,000 in cash. We debit cash 40,000. How much do we credit common stock? Well, we're gonna credit common stock number of shares times the stated value we don't have a par value we have a stated value which is five thousand dollar five thousand shares times five dollars anything left we call it paid in capital in excess of not par in excess of stated basically the same thing except the terminology is the same okay now we also have stocks that are no par what is no part? No part, it means it doesn't have a part value, it doesn't have a stated value. So the stock is issued and the company decided not to have a part for it. So what happened when no part stock does not have a stated value? So what happened if this stock don't have a part value? It means we issued 5,000 shares at $8. Well, if we issued 5,000 shares at $8, we're gonna get $40,000 in cash. Since we don't have a par value or a stated value, then we credit common stock for 40,000. So no paid in capital when no par, no stated value. This is what I'm trying to say. When there is no par and no stated value, there is no paid in capital, okay? Now, Issuing common stock for services and non-cash asset. Well, the corporation can issue stocks not only for cash, they can issue stocks for anything, which is services, and they can issue stocks for non-cash assets such as land, building, and equipment. So the company, rather than issuing stocks, what they do, they issue stocks, and in return, they receive land. Let me show you, this is the company, and the company is going to issue stocks. And in return, they're gonna get a piece of land. Okay, so they're not going to receive cash. The investors, the, the person, give up their land and give the land to the company. Okay, so this is an example of it. So the cost is either the fair value of the consideration given up or the fair value of the consideration re received, whichever is more clearly determinable. Now, what does that mean? What, what does the statement mean? I'm, I'm going to show you what does it mean when we work an example. We'll come back and we'll explain it. Let's start with the first example. Attorneys have helped Jordan Company incorporate. So a team of attorneys helped Jordan Company prepare their paperwork to incorporate with the state. The attorneys, they billed the company $5,000 for their services. They agreed to accept 4,000 shares of $1 par, par value common stock in payment of their bill. So here's what happened. The attorneys, the attorneys sends a bill to the company for $5,000. They send the bill to the company. 
company is supposed to pay them back, supposed to pay them back cash, $5,000. This is how it works. Now, the company don't have cash or the company want to preserve cash. So what did the company do? The company said, okay, I don't have cash to pay you. I'm going to give you 4,000 shares of my $1 par value. This is what, this is what I'm going to do. Okay. And the attorney said, that's okay. I will accept your 4,000 shares. Okay. At the time of the exchange, there is no established market price for the stock. So we don't know the price of the stock. We don't know the price of those 4,000 shares. But in a way, we know it. How do we know it? Well, if the attorneys accept 4,000 shares for the $5,000, it means $5,000 divided by 4,000 shares. It means each share is worth $1.25. Because if they accepted 4,000 shares, it means you pay them $5,000. It means each share is worth $1.25. Now, how do we journalize this entry? The company will have what we call organization expense. The company will have an organization expense of $5,000 which is they will debit an expense for $5,000. They will credit common stock for the number of shares times the par value. Number of shares times the par value is 4,000. Anything left is paid in capital in excess of par. So notice here, we did not know the, the value of the shares, but we knew the value of the service. Because we know the value of the service is 5,000. 5, Therefore, we record the transaction as the value of the service. Let's take a look at this example. Athletic Research is an existing publicly corporation. Its $5 par value is actively traded at $8 per share. What does that mean? It means the stock is known. The market value of the stock is known. The value of the stock is $8. That's the fair market value. The company issues 10,000 shares of the stock to acquire land recently advertised for sale for $90,000. So here's what happened. Here's the company and they want to buy a piece of land. Well, the land, they said, we are worth $90,000. That's what the land is advertised at. The company said, well, I'm going to give you 10,000 shares. I'm going to give you 10,000 shares. And I know each share is worth $8 because this is the fair value of the share. Well, if you're going to give up your land, okay, guess what? Your land is worth 80000 You can advertise it for a million. It doesn't matter. If I know how much I'm giving you, which I know, I'm giving you 10,000 shares, and I know my market price is $8, therefore I'm giving you 80,000, therefore your cost is 80,000. Therefore your land, my, your land cost to me is 80,000. Therefore I debit land $80,000. Then I will credit common stock. How much do I credit common stock? Number of shares times the par value. Anything extra is paid in capital in excess of par, which is $30,000. Let's go back to the statement here and how do we determine the cost? Okay, so cost is either the fair value of the consideration given up, which is this is when we, this is an example too, we give up stocks worth $8 per share times 1,000 shares. So we know how much we gave up. Or the fair value of the consideration received. In the attorney example, we know the consideration received is 5,000. Therefore, we base the consideration for 5,000. Now, what happened if we know both? If we know the value of the stock and we know the value of consideration received. Now, they should equal to each other. In other words, what I give up and what I receive should equal to each other because we are both reasonable people. Because what I give up is exactly what I'm going to be receiving and what you give up is exactly what I'm going to be receiving. So those two should equal to each other. But let's assume they are not equal and they're giving you a problem like this and you know the value of the stock, you go with the value of your stock. If you don't, if you don't know the value of your stock, then you will go with the value of consideration received. But if you know both, you would always go with the value of your stock. Let's take a look at preferred stock. Preferred stock are typically preferred. Uh, preferred stock typically preferred stake uh, stockholders have a priority. Priority as to what? So when you have preferred stock, when you when you buy preferred stock. So simply put, here's the company again. The company can sell common stock, which we talked about in the prior session, or they can also sell another type of stock, another class called preferred stock. So the preferred stock, somehow they are preferred. 
they have some sort of a preference. What is the preference? Well, they have a preference in terms of distribution of earnings, which is dividend. So when the company pays out dividend, okay, when the company pays out dividend, the preferred shareholders gets their money first. So they have this, this preference. Also, in case of liquidation, they also have a preference. So simply put, let me let me show you the, the what what do I mean by dividend revenues minus expenses equal to net income. Now, if the company going to pay dividend, well, first the preferred gets their dividend. Then after the preferred gets their dividend, the common the common stockholders get their dividend. So they get their money first. Okay. Also, in case of liquidation, in case the company went out of business, same thing. The preferred shareholders gets their money first, and whatever is left, if any, goes to the common. However, preferred shareholders, they have no voting right, they, no voting. They cannot vote. Simply put, they are not true owner because they cannot vote. Okay. Now, the good news is accounting for preferred stock at issuance is similar for that of common stock. It's technically the same. And let's work an example to show you how this works. Um, S Corporation issues 10,000 shares of $10 par value preferred stock for $12 per share. So they sold 10,000 shares, $12 a piece. The par value is 10. Well, if they sold it at $12, they received cash 120,000. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to credit preferred stock. How much do we credit preferred stock? How much do we credit preferred stock? The same concept as common stock, which is the number of shares times the par value, 100,000. And anything left, we called it paid in capital in excess of par preferred stock. Basically the same concept, different terminology. Same concept, different terminology. Let's take a look at a couple more examples, few more examples to see how this works. Cayman Corporation begins operation on May 1st, issuing 100,000 shares of $1 par value common stock for $12 per share. Well, they sold 100,000 shares at $12, the par value is a dollar. Well, cash is 120, 1.2 million. Common stock, number of shares times the par value, anything left is paid in capital. Okay. Let's take a look at the second transaction. On March 15th, the company issued 5,000 shares of common stock to attorneys in settlement of their bill of $50,000 for organization expense. So we know the organization expense is 50,000. We don't know the value of the stock. It's not giving. Therefore, we're going to go with the bill, $50,000. We debit organization expense, 50,000. We credit common stock, number of shares times the par value, and anything left, it's paid in capital in excess of common stock, 45,000. March 28th, Cayman Corporation issues 1,500 shares of $10 par value preferred stock for cash at $30 per share. Well, they sold 1,500 shares at $30. They received cash of 45000 We will credit preferred stock, number of shares times the par value. Anything left is paid in capital in excess of par value. If you have any questions, any comments about how to issue how to issue common or preferred stock, please email me. If you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating. If you're studying for the CPA exam, study hard. It's worth it.